Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. If you haven't seen the show before, you know, my, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I'm at uh, Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us, about uh, 40 in Worcester and 20 in Westboro and about 10 in Boston. And it's a specialty firm and therefore I get, everybody gets to specialize. So I get to specialize in this, which is elder law. Um, these shows I started a number of years ago, I think about 10 now, to supplement the seminars that I do at the Tisbury Council on Aging and to help you know the people and the issues that you need to kind of know about as a senior. One of those issues, which we've talked about here before, uh, is Alzheimer's disease. And today we have a special guest, a, a, an off-islander, uh, Jennifer Hoadley. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having uh, me. Jennifer, you're from the Alzheimer's Association. Yes. You're actually a big shmoo. You actually run the southeast, the whole southeast section of the Alzheimer's Association here in Massachusetts. I right? do, yes. That's like a lot, right? <laughs> but in, but you, you used to come over here as a little kid. I did, you yes. Said, you used to sail over from, from, from Woods Hole, I did. right? My you're grandpa originally... built a boat after he retired and uh, he spent his summers uh, here on the island. So you would, you've seen that Vineyard Haven Harbor probably in good weather and, yes. and, and bad. Absolutely. So now, so now you're back over. So thanks very much for coming. Thank so you. could you just kind of talk about, first of all, so, you know, just yourself. So you, you were originally from Situate, mm -hmm. right? Yes. As a matter of fact, you even went to, to, uh, to um, was it grammar school or high school with Maris Keating, who actually lives, I here, did, yes. who lives here on mm -hmm. the island, who said to say hello. Yes. That's very exciting. And then before you worked for the Alzheimer's Association, what did you do? So prior to my job here with the Alzheimer's Association, I worked in assisted living, yeah. uh, running memory care units. So yeah. um, not always the same company, but um, for I, I worked with three different companies. Um, yeah, and you started. It was you mentioned you actually worked for Hearthstone for yes, a while. Yes. Yes. And I mentioned to you, John Zeisler, who runs that, actually has a place down here in West Absolutely, District. Absolutely. Yeah, every, it's a every, small world. <laughs> everybody, everybody comes here. It's yeah. a small world, and it, everybody passes through. Yes. You know, at, at some point. <laughs> And so you did that for, for quite a few years, mm -hmm. but not too many because you're like just a kid. You know, you're one <laughs> sure. of those. I always, <laughs> I always tell people, it's like, it's like, remember when you were a little kid and everybody over like 25 looked like old? Mm -hmm. Now, like everybody under about 50 looks like <laughs> young. They're all like about the same. So anyway, you did that for, for a while and then you came to the Alzheimer's Association. Yes. And as I say, you, and you do Southeast Matt, and, and what is that? How, how big is the area that you yeah. cover? So um, basically from Quincy over to Mansfield on down to the Cape and the Islands and everything in between. So that's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a whole lot. It's a lot of towns and a lot of people living in those yeah. towns. So, so talk a little bit about the Alzheimer's Association, about the Massachusetts, it's the Massachusetts, New Hampshire chapter of the Alzheimer's Association, mm -hmm. kind of what they do and what you do. Sure. So um, the Alzheimer's Association is a national organization um, and then they're made up of chapters. So we're yeah. the Massachusetts, New Hampshire chapter and then I am the Southeast region. So um, in my role, I, I wear many different hats. Um, I am an educator, so I go out into the communities and I also offer um, education right in our office in Rainham. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we try to get out and let people know about the disease. So programs for the general public, um, we have one called Know the Ten Warning Signs. We have one yeah. about healthy living for your brain and body, um, the basics of the disease. Um, and then sometimes, um, you know, we're, we get connected with caregivers. Um, so we offer programs that can help them to be the best caregiver, give them information they need about how to communicate differently, um, what behaviors they may expect, safety aspects of the disease. Yeah. Um, we also offer programs for um, people living with the disease as well. So um, especially in the early stage where people want to maintain independence as much right. as possible and be able to manage all of the symptoms. Yeah. Um, we can help them to learn more about the disease. To and these are programs designed actually for the folks who have got the disease yes. in early stage yes. and who are like getting really stressed out about this mm -hmm. and kind of wh what's going on with my head and where's mm -hmm. the, where is this going and stuff. Yeah, I mean a lot of people, they go to a doctor because they figure something's going on and they get the diagnosis and you know, sometimes they're left with, okay, we'll see you in six months or we'll see you in a year. Right. Um, our goal is to hopefully have those people in the meantime connect with us so that we can help them figure out what to do during that time. One of the first things we talk about is making sure all of the legal and financial aspects are covered and we would have them talk to somebody like you or right. another elder law attorney. Um, 
Unfortunately, for folks, a lot of times they're talking to me and we're having that conversation. I'm like, you know, it's a little late. Yeah. But, but you know, un understandably, even at that point, you want to have you want to you want to have those conversations, mm -hmm. right? And right. and the best. But you have thing, them talk to a variety of people, right? Yeah, yeah. So the best thing is for for somebody who's just been diagnosed to not wait on those conversations. So whatever their care team looks like, whether it's friends, family, you know, spouses, whoever they want involved. Um, to have that conversation early as to what they want to see happen in the future. Um, they can be involved in that. They can talk about who they want to have manage their care um, when they're no longer able to make decisions. Right. Um, so it's so important. And that's important. a great time to have that conversation. Absolutely. It's kind, of, it's kind of really, so you just went through a whole number, number of presentations that mm -hmm. you do. Yes. You, you're the person that actually does that. Yeah, so. And typically, where do, where do you do the presentations? Um, anywhere, people will listen to me, really. Yes. But um, for the most part, we, we try to um, offer them in community libraries, community centers, um, councils on aging, Must be senior centers, senior yeah. centers yeah, yeah. Um, really anywhere that um, you know people will gather. We've we've reached out to a lot of faith-based organizations. Um, you know they they know that um, they have an audience there that you know they know their the people that attend their their um, you know their church or you know whatever it may be. Um, so they get a feel for this is a real need in our particular community, and and we're happy to go out and touch base with uh, people in that organization and let them know, you know, what services we offer and how they can access those services and, and also do those educational programs. That's a lot of programming. That's mm -hmm. a whole lot of programming. So now, now, so, and now talk about those other services too. I'd like you to talk about, and especially talk about the, help, the, the helpline mm -hmm. and other things that the Alzheimer's Association is doing. But by the way, just kind of in parentheses, as we've had the conversation earlier where I mentioned to you that you know, a number of years ago, I, was, I, had, I had done something with the Alzheimer's Association, and I just found myself saying, God, I mean, it's all about the cure, which I get, but I'm too old. Mm -hmm. The cure, you know, it's too late for me, you know, because one of my goals is, is, to, is to make sure, well, we've talked about creating dementia-friendly communities. Mm -hmm. I want to be in a dementia-friendly community when I get it, and that's mm -hmm. not in 20 years, you know, it's right. kind of, it's sooner. So, so just kind of t talk about the other things that the Alzheimer's Association is doing, because I think for many people who really had thought about the Alzheimer's Association just in terms of that, in mm -hmm. terms of raising money for the cure, sure. there's really been kind of a, to me at least, a kind of a reorientation, not a reorientation, but an expansion of your, 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 what you're doing into this really helping people deal with it right. today. Right. Know? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people do associate us with raising funds for research, which is part of what we do. Right. Um, but we also realize, you know, we do want to find a cure. We do want to find a disease-altering treatment. Um, but in the meantime, there's a lot of people that are dealing with this today. today. So right. our goal is to help those people. Um, the best first call people can make is to our, our helpline. Um, with our helpline, we have... Um, our care consultants and our helpline staff that can answer 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. seven days a week. And by the way, you probably talked to our wonderful producer here, Carl Holt, about we'd like to have that on a banner. Sure. So that during this show, as people are watching right now, hopefully they're seeing mm -hmm. that phone number and the email address and stuff right. so that they know. Absolutely, right? yeah. Um, you know, so uh, and it's literally 24/7. 24, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They'll be able to talk to a person, um, and the calls vary. I work on our helpline from time to time, and some people will call and say, "Somebody gave me your card. I don't know why I'm calling, but I figured I should." And that's totally fine. We can work with that. Um, our goal is to get you to make that call, and then once you call, we figure out what you need. Um, right. Some people just need a list of day programs in their area or, um, you know, a, a visiting nurse or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so but we're some able... Some of them are real emergencies. Yeah. Like some, it's like the, you know, my, my husband and I are fighting and, you know, kind of what do I do? Right, right. And that's so, okay, too, and yep. it's 24-7. Yep, so we can help in terms of getting people connected to resources in their community as well as um, some coaching for, you know, situations that may occur. Um, in the moment, if it's right in the moment, we're happy to help. Um, we want to make sure people are safe and are well cared for, and that includes the person with the disease as well as the care team. Right. Um, it's really a look at the entire situation. Um, so we want to make sure that everybody's needs are met. 
um, that this shouldn't have to be as stressful as it can be. Um, people don't have to go through this alone and uh, we're there to, to be that sounding board, um, you know, when you're trying yeah. to figure out, am I saying the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Um, you know, there's a lot of self-doubt and questions yeah. that come up. because if you haven't done it, right? and, you're, and, you're, and you're, you're either you're going through yourself something you've never experienced, mm -hmm. or you're dealing with someone yep. and, and who seems to be kind of changing, and you say, what do you, Ken, just what do you do? Mm -hmm. So you can be pretty, that can be pretty stressful. Yeah, and there, there are certainly, you know, common threads that come about for people, whether it's, you know, how do I address the driving issue, or how do I address the legal Ma, and financial Ma issue? I still get driving that car, and right, people, right, right, right. And, you know, so we want to make sure that everything is taken into account and we figure out the best plan for each individual because even though some of the issues that arise may be the same, everybody's different in right. how that's managed. So we like to take you know some time to be able to communicate with them and get a feel for what resources they have available to them and, and you know who else is part of that, that picture so we can figure out the best thing that will work for them. And, and how and so when that person called, first of all, who is answering the call? Mm -hmm. Is it someone in Massachusetts? Is it, who, who answers the call? Yeah. And how do you know? If, you, if you're, call, you're answering that call from, well, I know your offices are now in Waltham, used mm -hmm. to be in Watertown, right? Mm -hmm. How do you know to be helping, you know, what, can you, what can you say to someone on Martha's Vineyard about sure. that? Sure, so um, right now, uh, if, if somebody were to call and it's you know, uh, during business hours, it uh, de really depends on what area code they're calling from. So if they have a phone that is a 508 area mm -hmm. code, it will bump to the Massachusetts, New Hampshire chapter. Um, it really depends on who's covering the phones that day. So if it's right. me, then it'll be me in my office. Um, but it might even be you. It, it, might it be could you be, your sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, at times it's in our Waltham office. Um, you know, all of the, the colleagues that I work with yeah. are well versed in our database and know, um, you know, what resources are available to people. After hours, it goes to our national call center. Again, it's the same database, yeah. so they are, have the ability to um, pull up the file if the person's called in the past. They can see what kind of communication was already given. Oh, that's great, mm -hmm. because you're maintaining a national Right, database. right, so, um, and then also being able to pull up the resources to say, okay, I know that this exists in your area, um, and be able to point them in the right direction. Right. So it's really meant to be seamless. Um, it wouldn't matter if, you know, if it were me that's, that's more local or right. somebody that, that is in our Chicago office. Um, it's really meant to be a seamless process where they'd get um, the best possible information they can that's um, for any, from any of us. And so there are all of these programs that, that, you're, that you offer and then there's, and there's the 24 hour helpline. Mm -hmm. So is there any charge for any of that? No, um, we're able to offer all of our programs and services uh, at no cost um, to families and people living with the disease. Um, we're able to do that because we have um, some grants that we apply for. We have our, our biggest fundraiser is our Walk to End Alzheimer's, which happens um, every year in the fall, usually late yep. September. Um, we also have something called the Longest Day, which is another big fundraiser. It's a, a newer one. It's a um, few years old now. Um, and it's an exciting thing because uh, it happens on June 21st, which tends to be the longest day the longest of, day. Uh, of yeah, sunlight. Yeah. And uh, it's um, really up to individuals what they want to do for um, in honor of somebody that they love. I see. Um, so I we've see. had people that do um, knitting circles, and there's always one member of their team knitting throughout this, this time period. We've had children do lemonade stands, which is really great. Um, we have people that hike the 48 peaks in New Hampshire. So um, people do all sorts of different things. It's, it's yeah. really whatever their interests are. What, you know, some people do a particular um, hobby or task yeah. in honor of somebody because it, it's a connection to that individual. That's um, great. And, yeah. and, and the result of all of that is that the services that you're giving mm -hmm. are services that you can offer for free. Right. And speaking of some local services, so I had you meet some local folks yes, today, right? It's yes. great because you've been here for the day. So nice. Right? So we talked and we saw, we saw Sandy Cordoba and, and Beth Toomey from Horizons Geriatric, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And talked about educational, educational stuff with them, right? right? And then you went to the Memory Cafe. Yes. So tell me about, how was the Memory Cafe? So great. Um, they've just moved into their new space. With, with Nancy, Nancy Langman was yes. there and, and my friend, 
um, Leslie Clapp, yes. who is, both of those folks had been on this show before, by the oh, way, great. as, has, as great. has Sandy. Yep. This is a very local, yeah. this is a very local show. Yeah. So, so uh, tell me about uh, your thoughts so on the memory. I, I, I feel like um, there's a lot of really exciting things happening here on the island. Um, the Memory Cafe was uh, in their very their new location today. Um, they had musicians and they had a good turnout. Um, it, everybody had smiles on their faces. There was one woman tapping, and uh, I thought she had her tap shoes with her, and I thought that was great. She had her tap shoes she with did. her? She did. She was going right along to the music. Um, and, I, you know, I feel that music is always um, such a great entryway to somebody who has some form of dementia right. um, because it just opens up this part of the brain that, that's definitely still there and um, you know I think it's a great way to connect with people so I yeah. love that they incorporate a lot of music into their memory cafe. Yeah it's interesting that the, 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 the Secretary of Elder Affairs who lives actually in my area, she lives mm -hmm. in one, one town over in Westboro, that's her big thing because her mother, her mother has dementia and she, but her mother was a, was a, was a ballet dancer mm -hmm. in her younger days right mm -hmm. and she still goes with her mother to, in, to ballet that's and it's great. Just, just constantly makes her day. Mm -hmm. So you saw the memory cafe and then we went to lunch and we just kind of talked about some of the other stuff that they're doing yeah. and we had we talked with, with Nancy Nancy Langman and, and uh, who is w w one of the people who really started the memory cafe and is now doing more and more kind of outreach mm -hmm. and with Leslie. So, so what is your sense? You know, kind of going back, because you'll be you'll be heading back to the back to America later <laughs> later today, right? Of kind of how how you how you feel that the Alzheimer's Association can work with the stuff that they've got here, because I've mm -hmm. always told the folks that are here, you don't realize how good it is, you know, right. how far ahead you are of so mm -hmm. many communities. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. what are your, but what are your initial thoughts about that? I feel like there, there's a great model happening here where um, it's really looking at what are the needs on the island and meeting those needs and, and doing it in a, a great way. Um, so, you know, I think as the Alzheimer's Association, we're here to support whatever um, these, these programs and services that are already being offered on the island and then, um, you know, fill in any gaps that, that may be missing. Um, I think the the one thing that really does help is um, that we have the 24 7 helpline so even if somebody is that's already huge. that's huge yeah. yeah if they're already receiving services um, you know in addition to that they can be reaching out to our right. helpline and and right. you know using us for the off hours and on the flip side of that for, for somebody who's calling the hotline to have you be aware of this this real array of services that are that are being offered mm -hmm. here and that are being developed Right. It just seems like it's just a nice, it's a nice fit. It is, it's yeah. Nice I think, fit. you know, certainly the, there's a, a lot of cohesiveness that can happen. And, um, you know, just being able to refer to each other is, is a great way to work. That's really exciting. And I, and I know that so a, after this show, we're going to the, actually the Center for Living, right. Center for Living board meeting, just so that we can, so that, so we can introduce you to, to the folks who are there. You'll find it's really special. I mean, this, this notion, you know, we were talking about it a little bit, a little bit earlier, this notion of, a nonprofit organization that has government folks involved in it, you know, so that you know people feel you know comfortable that there's that there's real oversight there, but that there's real, and from the from the town's perspective, from the government's perspective, for them to feel like it isn't just the taxpayers that are supporting this. That you you know they're going they're, you're going to a broader. It's it's just a wonderful, mm -hmm. it's a wonderful thing. So I just want to say thank you very much. I know thank this is like you. you know it's a it's a long way from America, you know. But <laughs> but as I as I had mentioned, we were talking about the fact that you know you obviously get up early. Was, you know, and every time I come here, I get up about three thirty in the mm -hmm. morning, and I find myself saying, "What am I doing?" And then I get here and I go, "Oh, I remember now." Right. It's a very yeah. special. It's a very and th special this place. was especially special for me. Um, I, I mentioned to your colleague Brenda earlier, which she was giving me a tour, and I so many bits of the island were familiar to me from from my childhood and um, you know just my reason for being here today it it really stood out for me because my grandfather had Alzheimer's disease um, so and you know he was my reason for coming here as a child um, with, with on his boat and it, it really just kind of comes together so that's a wonderful thing yeah I, I want you to do one other story though which we were just kind of sure. talking about because I know that one of the the goal of the goal of a lot of the work I do, the goal of a lot of the work you do is, is 
causing Alzheimer's to no longer be a disease, that, that it to no longer be an embarrassment. It's a disease. It's a disease with symptoms. It's mm -hmm. not an embarrassment. Sure. So tell the story of the lady from, yeah, I believe yeah. you said it was from Orleans. Sure, yeah. Story. So, I mean, there is so much of a stigma that is still attached to this disease, but we are seeing it start to diminish uh, yeah. the more people talk about it. Um, I, I uh, did a presentation at um, the Senior Center in Orleans, and this woman was relaying a story about how she was walking through town. She walks everywhere. and. Um, she mentioned how somebody... Who has early state, who has early state. Yes, early state. yes. So she mentioned how somebody had um, pulled over and uh, was asking her for directions. And she said, well, I can give you directions, but I apologize if they're not right because I have dementia. <laughs> dementia. Um, and they kind of chuckled a little bit, but, um, you know, she, she did her best. And I think that was great because what a freeing thing to be able to talk about it. And what a freeing thing. Mm -hmm. That is a dementia-friendly community. Absolutely. Thank you very much for this. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Alzheimer's Association a little bit more. Once again, you'll have the information. Take down that number, the 24-hour hotline number. This is really, really important, right? And thank you very much for coming, and I'll see you in the next uh, installment of Bridge Run Briefs. Thank you very much.